a sort of a swan song trip. Um, very, very still, quiet night. It is warm, but it will get cold tonight. I'm all bivvied up here. I've already been fishing on uh, Milton Lake with quiver tip rods and had some really good tench fishing. And now I've set up here and uh, hopefully, there's the old CC Moors Pacific tuna. Hopefully, I'm going to throw some baits out, have a bit of a chill out. I'm due to schedule to make another film tomorrow. You can't not have a go, can you? When you get conditions like this. Nothing moving on the surface at the moment. I think I'm just going to go one, two, three. One down there towards the bridge because I can see that, you know, hopefully during the dark. Straight across maybe that big tree or possibly the willow. Give me a sight casting there. And one close in down here, which I never really do margin fishing here. The few times I've fished the main lake, it's like everybody just heave it out, don't you? Heave out and hope. Got some ground bait going to go in. I'm just waiting for it to set up a little bit there. Um, what else have we got? Loads of stuff to throw in the water. Saving those for tomorrow, those cells, they're really good. Have I forgotten the boilies, I say? No, no, Graham, please. I've got the Pacific tuners. I've got ones I'll use, these all going in. Fruity tuna, diamond whites, which I have caught on here before. They're 20 mil, they're big ones, so I hope you don't get the green. Um, some more to throw in there, spicy crab. And these ones, I don't know. This one's called salty squid, so I don't know about that one. I've never used that one before. So somebody out to tell me, is that one a good one or not? I don't know. I'll be just fishing with the Pacific tuna anyway. And um, probably just fish three hard baits on the bottom mesh bag. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to whiz out some ground bait, which I hope will bring the small fish around. And then um, boilies on top of that. And then din-dins for me, not just the fish. Now I've made these balls just with pretty much Bailey's number one. So they're really, really firm and I'm hoping the bream will take longer to break them down. Otherwise I'm going to be out all night with lion bites. So I'm going to put some just down here, just out there. And the others are going to cast towards the cast, catapult towards the bridge. We'll see how far we get just to get some bait in the water. Try and space them in a bit of an arc. I've gone just slightly the left of the bridge there yeah, because I've got a tree up there which I might or might not see at night and then I can put some boilies over the top of that that's definitely reachable I say it myself. That's a short one. That's that. Then pile a load of uh, boilies in, get them rigged up, and um, have something to eat or fill, and eventually chill out. I find it best just to put. Not a full catapult fall in. Otherwise they fall out like that. Seagull's a bit late to the party. And of course, down here, I can just throw them. get any. It's lucky. I'm gonna, not going to be using these for hook bait so they can uh, pretty much go out. I 
don't think too many people actually can't fish down this way so the old seagulls will come all the way down from the other end so after great de deliberation I'm rigged up got some new hook links there as well got the uh, PVA bag of about six boilies and a larger hard one of the hard Pacific tuners in the 18 mil I think it is so I'm going to lob those out I'm going to probably fish my soft rod just around the corner here because I'm so close that's just going to be a, a drop in the water job to be honest when I'm this close I almost don't need that bag do I because there's plenty of bait in there one thing don't cast it out until you get your tip ring cleared I just drop it like that make sure that's cleared check all the drag and it's just a simple underhand lob here bosh down I don't move it at all open the bell let it run back and just check the tension on the bait runner I like to put one ring just the other side there now you can pop these in here so they're gripped but I always have a nightmare I end up striking and ripping the whole rubber rest out but we'll put it in there for now so I just tension up here using the spool oh dear, I'm tired been fishing already all those are release bobbing well sort of quite a heavy one because I don't want to be bothered by the bream all night got it nice and short just enough for a drop back and then we'll work out the others I've been used quite a bit of catfish and maybe I'm getting down on battery. One more night would be nice. Oh, not these birds. Clear off. They're such a pain. You have to watch because you've got... That's what you need, a lead sandwich. He's shooting rats or pheasants or something. Shame he's shooting his geese. You know, if this is hanging there. They come up and peck that. That's great, isn't it? A 15 pound geese taken off up the lake. Lovely. Still, would be a PB, I suppose. Now, you remember before I mentioned about that up there, so I stand to the left of the. I'm aiming for the left of the bridge. That's fine. I'll sink it straight away. There's a lot of scum on the surface. Just tweak it like this. This is just my way of doing it. Back we come. Always check that tension on the on the bait runner I think we're good I'll give it a rest pal such a pain they will go at night I dare say
Well, I've had a couple of lime bites. And in fairness, big fizzing going out in the middle there. That is 100% of carp. My God, I can see the bubbles. I should get the other camera and get those massive. In fact, I could will. It's a massive heap of bubbles there. Yeah, what I was going to say before, I was rudely interrupted by a massive patch of bubbles out there, is um, I can see the point when I'm fishing with a tight line. Any fish is cruising, it's going to bump into the line, it's going to give me a false beat and give me pretty well a sleepless night. He's not going near the bait, he's not going to take the bait, he's just bumping into the line. So I can see those backstop leads, because I could never see the point of them before, but I can see it now, because fish can pass under the line from here, but ones nearer the swim might have a slight angle on the line, just snag it and give me a false, you know, false uh, bite alarm uh, reading, and also might even spook the fish, who knows. I'm not too worried about spook fish, look, they're all commercial fisheries, or stock for anglers to catch, aren't they, really? The, the one I really want to kick off is this left-hand one under the bush, because I like fishing margins. And in my mind, it's a sort of classic place for a, a massive 20 pounder to be cruising along, seeing all those boilies, picks them up and suddenly moves off. So I don't mind being woken up for that because big fish can come from anywhere in the lake. I've just gone one, two, three. I just spaced it about. I've not fished this spot before, so I haven't got a clue. They know I've been here though, by the amount of bait that's out there. One of them. I only want to stop one carp. If I can't catch a carp tonight, I'm going to go over the other lake, uh, Bonds, the other one, and I've got some smaller pellets which are really good. And I reckon with a feeder and a quiver tip rod, I might be able to salvage something there. But I'm, I, look, I'm written off. High pressure's coming in. A little bit of rain, not bothered about the rain because there's so much high pressure coming in. Being very, very dry. But I would like to get one double figure carp out of this, at least. Otherwise, I might as well stay at home with a wife in bed there. I could stay awake there with a the snoring. And another thing, the last two years I've seen hardly any house martins, swifts, swallows. I've seen ha hardly any insects over my uh, flowers and plants. Hardly any bees, only the big bumblebees. Not many of those hoverflies. So what on earth is going on with the insect population? And is the lack of insects a reason we are not getting the swifts and swallows in clouds in the summer that we used to get when I was a kid? I mean clouds of them. Oh, there's a carp moved over there. So you can't use bread here in the daytime, you just get mullered by the birds. I have got a loaf of bread, obviously, for when it gets dark. And as well as the loaf of bread, Captain Stupid ain't so stupid. Oh no, I've got a little comfort here. I only have to bring one, and if I go on my boat, it wants to be a good day for me to have one. I never ever take um, alcohol on the boat other than one can of beer, maybe to celebrate something. Most of the time, I don't, I don't take anything, just a bottle of water. You can have a beer when you get back, can't you? Cheers. There's a man trying to open a ring pool with one hand, film with the other. <laughs> oh, oh, I've done my nail. better. Now, yeah. cook up tonight is a variation on a theme. I was told uh, by one of our awesome army guys, followers, get that Heinz big soup. Heinz big soup. Like Popeye. Popeye the sailor man. Heinz the boily man. Sad in it, fishing and talking to the camera on your own. Could be worse, could be talking to those geese. And yes, you put, put some chicken in there. Now, I did that on one of the other carp films. It was pretty good, but the wife bought chicken tikka masala, which is a peculiar taste going with soup. I'm going to try this with cheap peeled new potatoes in water. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not axle grease. Water. However, one needs to employ some services of another person with a brain because A, this one has a ring pull, and B, this one doesn't. The sensible wife said, 
I strongly suggest one of these. Good job somebody had to look after me, and not it? hope it works. It's full of washing up liquid. <laughs> it is it looks very foamy to me for potato. I've never had foamy potatoes before, but it appears I might be having them tonight. Well, it must be all right, mustn't they? So, strain them off. We need the water. Bone dry. I've never seen foamy... <laughs> I've never seen foamy potatoes, so... It could be a noisy night in the sleeping bag. I'll get this on the go and I'll show you what it looks like when it's sort of cooked. I don't need any runs at the moment of any description. <laughs> I, might, I might have runs later in the night with the foamy potatoes, but I don't need any at the moment. So I'm just going to whack, whack in my foamy potatoes. It's peculiar, isn't it? And heat the lot up in one go. God, I've actually got somewhere level. That's good. And for the uh, Teflon aficionados, I actually have a wooden spoon, I believe carved by Jerry Airy, a fisherman I used to go fishing with years ago. I'm sure he did that handcrafted, bushcraft style, so it doesn't chip off the Teflon. Not that there's much Teflon on there after I've scraped around on it over the years and years of that's a bream. Trouble is, when you fish with the rods quite high, you do get line bites from bream, and obviously carp as well. So I fear a sort of a broken, sleepless night. For the litter conscious, I find putting this, making this oval, you'll find you can drop the lid in, and even get the second one in, put it in a bag, take it home, put it in a rubbish bin. Easy peasy, you would think. I think we're done, people. Everything's bubbly. It's like the side of Mount Vesuvius. Shortly before you have a pyroplastic flow. It's been on a stove. There's a wooden spoon. Spoon or fork? It is soup. So this is Heinz big soup. Big, big man soup. Plus some potatoes thrown in for good measure. You heard the saying, he dropped that like a hot potato. That's why I'm being careful. All cooked. Try the potatoes first. Yeah, drop like a hot potato. Oh, here comes the rain. Well, so this doesn't come too much.
If that hadn't say carp, I don't know what does. God, I'm on that rod I said on the left by the bush. I actually saw the rod top go round before the alarm went off. I have no idea on size. That was weird. And you know what? As I lifted into this fish, another two swirls came up. I don't know what you're going to get at this. It's not the worst, best angle. Have to get what we get. Might be the only fish of the session. I don't think it's a big fish myself. Well, he's woken up now, he came in relatively easily. It'd be so nice if I, so nice if I don't have to disturb those other two lines. I can check that drag. Well, I've got quite a lot of drag, I've got catfish drag on that one. Tempted to get a higher angle for you guys, but I'm, oh no, no, I'm gonna lose a fish. You just have to bear with me. He's going well. I don't know what to. What to suggest? That's the I cannot get the rod any higher on the tripod. Come on. I haven't even seen it yet. It's dusk, this camera doesn't show, but it is dusk. He's pinwheeling now like a tuna. The net's up there, I can reach it, but I haven't even bothered yet, because I've barely got it under control. Real scrap of it. I think it's a common. Goodness me, he's going. Slowly and carefully. How wrong could I have been on size? Let's get it up on the old uh, nappy changing mat. This is the biggest six or eight pounder I've had all year, <laughs> if not ever. It's 
sleeve rolling job. Right, I just I was sitting there having that beer and the rod went tweet, 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 boom. A nice mirror car. Ooh. Yeah, tell me people, that's a lump and a half. 15s, 14s, 15s, that sort of size. I say he's out of 15s. What fantastic fish. Well, there's still a little bit of light. I'll show you, it's just literally off the corner of that bush. It just looks such a fishy place when I used to margin fish. So let's get another one out there. And, uh, well, I'd like to get one before 12. One through the night and one at dawn. That'd be brilliant if I could get three. That's being greedy. I've got another string of bag, bag of boilies. Is that a slack liner? Weird. I saw the top pull right round. It just didn't hook up. So I'm assuming the boil is still on there. It, it's about half past nine at night. It's nearly dark, but this camera's brilliant in low light. But that was the one I fancied round to the left, and so it proved. The right hand rod just kicked off, guys. That was weird because I had a, a huge bang on the rod top. Beeping away, nothing. I left it and left it and left it because these boilies are so hard they don't re they really come off. You'll catch several carp sometimes on. So I'll get you a bit better shots this time. I better say again that this is a small fish, about six or eight pounds, haven't I? Oh no. <laughs> now this one's coming in much easier. Try and get it if I can in one go. Oh my word, it's another Uno Lumpo. It's one of those crazy fat commons. Hang on, buddy. Well, the light's going, but that's a fat one, trust me. Ooh, it's a fat one, another fat one. And here come the dreaded geese. I'll tell you, this one's about 16, maybe. Well, the bats are out, guys. I don't know if you're going to see them or not. I'm going to zoom around and try and catch one or two for you. You might just see them go through the screen. See if I can stand up and get them. 
no owls yet. There was one, I don't know if you'll get that. Has anybody else filmed bats in the dark? Amateurs like me, that's what I'm talking about, not professionals, obviously they have. My well, bang goes my theory about there being, what's that one? Like an egret or something. Wow, that one really took my moustache off. There's that bird over there again. What the head is that? No, it's a heron. Oh, the dreaded ducks. I've got some bread out there at the moment, guys. I've put some bread out. Well, I'm going to switch this off, save battery. I'm on again, guys. You won't see anything. Session. Pretty much the same size, 14s, 15s, that sort of size. Really good fishing. I mean, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Look at it. Great fish. Wow. It's barely 10 o'clock. That was an absolute scream up the tape. Hopefully the camera doesn't go in the water. I might get lucky here. There he is. Sometimes it's... Oh God, the other one's going. He wants to go. Gone. Where are we? That's a busy session. I was just sitting in the, uh, I was just sitting in the bivvy. As you can see what I was doing, I'm tying up more string bags. Whew. I really get wider mesh on it. I don't like these small mesh ones. PVA. So I'm just sitting here, minding my own business, tying up spares. Now there's a tip, because I know I'm gonna get tired later on. Oh, I might not get anything at all. That could have been just a lucky strike. But if I've had three before midnight, and I was expecting to get I normally do carpet. One before midnight would be nice, you know, before it's dark. One before midnight, one through the night, and one at dawn. I think three carp a night you can't grumble at. So I'm tying up some bags. Now, the first two carp, wait for this, were caught using bags that I put back in these tubes. You know, when you get the plastic tube. Oh, oh I've got it here, stupid child get these plastic tubes to keep the PVA really dry, like this, right? When I've run out, which I have, <laughs> nothing new there, I, uh, I tie the bags up. If I don't use those bags like that, if I don't use them, I put them in those tubes and keep them dry. Now that bag's been there, uh, that tube has been in that bag a month. Two of them have, and the first two fish I had with bags that I tied up to fish Angler's Paradise, and that was a month ago, down in Devon, another day ticket, you can get day tickets down there. 
I'm just putting six of these and these boilies are a year old which I got at Topper Manor last time I went to Topper Manor obviously I don't do a huge amount of carp fishing overnight I do like the odd overnight I must admit there's something about it, it's so easy so it's just took themselves, it's so easy I enjoy it up to a point and I got some sleep like tomorrow I've got to get up and go and film on another lake that's the third film in 24 hours So try and get yourself a, a separate bait container or even look an empty one of these. Get an empty one of those. Keep it dry, no moisture. One, two, three, four, five. Where am I putting them? Am I eating them? Yeah, and then um, you can keep them dry in there. As long as they're kept dry, you can use them. I mean that's a month old. Those last two bags were a month, not the first two fish I caught were a month old bags. So I've got them because I know when I get really tired I won't want to be doing this. I'll just get a fish and then hopefully get back on the bed here. Just the way it is with this type of carving. There we go. So I've got four bags there and they can go ready in case, I, in case not so I will, in case I get another fish. Obviously I'm expecting one to kick off. But always keep this stuff dry. I haven't actually used the bags, the solid bags. Mike's give me some because I don't really carp gear in my case at all. He doesn't even go carp fishing now. They go fishing now. Just does his bush bushcraft show. You can't blame him the numbers he gets. He put one up. Well, it makes no difference when I put this film up, but he put one up and in 20 days he had 2.1 million views in 20 odd days. Wow, it's a lot of views. Guys. I'm going to check what the time is and I think I've got to skip one more because I haven't got much left on this camera. Somehow I'm on again guys. I don't know what you're going to get but that, turn that off. That right hand bridge swim is the one. This is like some weird, weird heavy fight on this one. Well, that sounds a bit stupid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. I've got hard any time, and I want to get it in the net. If I do get it, I'll get it. To, I'll show you in the mat if I get that far. Holy, 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 holy peep. This is the kitty. This is the biggest carp I think I've ever caught at Berry Fisheries. It's immense, guys. It's immense. It's just bottomed out. Bottomed out my 22 pound scales. What am I gonna do? It's an immense mirror, I think it's over 30. Does anybody know this fish? I can't even pick it up. Hell. Me. Me. You can't really get it out. Does anybody know it? It's huge. I'll try and keep it in the net if I can. Twenty-nine pounds, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I knew it was close to thirty. I thought I thought it's got to find somebody you can wait for with. No worries, my pleasure. I don't know if that's the actual name, but if it's not, it is now. Well done, mate. Listen, I really appreciate you taking no the time worries. to come around. My pleasure. No, thank you. Oh, no. It's still not worth me buying a pair of scales, because Jesus Christ. 20, 29 pound dead, that was yeah. Brilliant, yeah, 29 brilliant. dead, yeah, spot on. Oh, brilliant, thank you for listening, I really do appreciate it. Yeah. No worries. If I ever get a spare, which I only have to bring, what, you got a can of our ale? Use my fortune, I can't give you one. It's already, no worries, it's, it's you're already all right, empty. no. It's already empty. No, you give me plenty of pleasure watching your videos, mate, so it's the well. least I can do. Yeah, that's a peppy, that was it. Jeez, I, I knew it was a big fish, but it just came in really heavy. Yeah. I thought, what's wrong with this fish? Is it like it's bottom?
sort of a foul hook, you know, when they go like this. Yeah. I thought, Jesus Christ, if I had a big pike like this, it might come in dead, and you go, wow, that's a big one. 29 pounds. Fantastic. What more do you want? Well, that's as good as I'll get before it closes. I mean, I'll come here. Oh, of course. I'm not, I'm not a carp fisherman, you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. I carp fish and I catch them, but I'm not really, like you guys probably do it all the time. So I'm not going to say I deserve a fish like that. Oh. But it's, I've been a long time coming. Yeah. Oh, again with the battery, same battery pack, guys. I fell over and he broke my hip on the hole there. Hopefully get some of this. Just about to lose everything. Well, it's nearly in the land of north then. I think it's about two in the morning. Huh? See if I can get this fish out. You have to be quick, you've got to change your battery. Pack. It's a fish about 15 again, 16. This one might even be more. Oh. No, he's somewhere between 14 and 16. Look at it. Oh. That was such a single toner. I fell out of the bed. Went, and went down a hole here. I thought I broke my thumb there. Crashed everything over. I think I set all the buzzers off. I don't know what the other guys think. Sorry, guys. <laughs> if it's a right nightmare, I put my foot down a hole there. Probably going to do it twice like you do. Oh, but that's going to be bruised in the morning. I don't know what it is, 2.15 or something obscene. But five cart, four doubles, one few ounces off of 30. 29 pounds. Wowie. That's just, that's not me at all, is it? Right, I don't know if anything's going to kick off again. That's that point blank one under that bush. I think I f the faster the take was, the faster I tried to get out of bed. It was absolutely whirring. I could hear the real whirring, the spool turning. Kept it over all this crap. Still worth it, at least you know you're alive. We're not going to save my thumb. I've got the battery change. Let's put that out. Fell out of bed again. Hit my hip this time. I missed the hole and went somewhere else. But another carp on. I've got to finish another double figure fish. Holy cow. I'll see how far I get with it, guys. knees after this. See a hell of a lot of traffic I can hear. You know, more than other years I've uh, noticed here. Must be some sort of breeze direction. Crazy commons. Nice looker. I'm just I'm just lucky the fish is not good, aren't I? <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know what to say, number seven's just come in. Oh, it's 
It's just a crazy, crazy session, people. That's number seven. Unbelievable. Get the fishes. It's a good fish here. It's a 17 pound fish, that one. Wow, eh? Let's, let's get it back. 17 pounds. Holy smoly. We're just getting dawn. Just about starting to light up. Just creep out a little bit of dawn coming through the sky. Cold down. The cold of dawn. That middle one, I don't think it's gone off at all. Just a quick lift on another one, guys. It's a common. Ah, it's a good one. 21 pounds. I'm just covered in fish line. That's it. 21 I've got that out guys, 21 pounds, what a session, it's a parrot beat to it, morning again guys in the morning, There we go guys, it's another double figure fish. Well the camera battery's out, food's getting out. Nine carp, 29, 21, 17, those are 14s to 17s, unbelievable, I'm going to have to go to the GoPro in a minute, I've got to try and get some sleep, that, one, that last one was in the daylight, don't get many of those here, I don't anyway. Stiff neck, feels like a broken rig, broken thumb, went in a big hole there. I don't know how it didn't end up in the water, but worth it. Oh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe I dozed off for a couple of hours this morning. I just, that's the most manic, what I call big carp session for me that I think I've ever had. I'm still sort of phased by it. What a shame, you know, that they're going to be selling. I think they're selling the lake. Probably be sold by the time I get the film put up. But uh, it's an estate lake, really nice carp, and it, as you see, with a view like this, I'm just going to grab some breakfast here. Served by my good lady wife, who lets me off the lead once a week if I want to go fishing. Perhaps more. Anyway, the view from the totally awesome fishing office again. But I feel I bashed my nail, went down that ditch there. I crashed down that in the night, skidded over there, nearly bounced into the uh, water there, trying to get a rod that was down here. And the problem being, I've got that so close to me, that, that bait. 
when a car picks up and cranks off, it does what we call a single toner. If it's just beeping, you just sort of get out of bed and you can get to it. But when it's a screaming toner and the rod's going, I can look at the wheel, real whizzing. It just makes you go faster. And I went straight down there, bash my knee, bash my hip, thought I broke my thumb. But grabbed the rod, ain't got the fish. And now we're going to get brekkie. I just got a brew going and then I'm gonna pack up and make one of two long journeys back to the car before I go down and try and see if I can stay awake and uh, have a go with a swim feeder see if I can pick off some smaller carp in the uh, bond lake. not looking forward to packing up half of which is trying to work out how to get that biffy fighting with the bits of elastic that keeps relocating itself after you pull it apart Still, it's, it's cloudy. The breeze is coming up. Last night there was no wind at all. And do you know what, guys? I don't even know what the moon phase was. I just so lucked out, just came to this peg. Thought, I'll come out to get away from people, you know, because I've got to match you in the morning. And if I'm fishy and I'm woken up during the night, if I do doze off, it might be between seven and nine or something like that eight nine eight nine thirty just to grab an hour's sleep when you finally relax because it shuts down i find it tends i don't don't think i've done any morning fishing actually other than this one i pack up for carp here at uh, the main lake i didn't want to get disturbed because i've had to pack up and move for the match hangers to come down i thought oh no i just want to i'm getting disturbed now look, look. this is disturbing isn't it? Warm. You can drink as much water as you want, but it's not nothing like a cup of tea. How much would this kettle be worth after 50 years of owning it? That is what you call fishing provenance on a kettle. If I do get to Bonds, I've got a bit, quite a bit of ground bait left over sweet corn, they are so going to get pasted. I'm either going to catch fish or they're going to be very, very sick. Some of you carp experts and manufacturers might be thinking, how can we earn some money out of Graham's backrest? I honestly don't think anybody would buy it, would they? It's an unusual configuration, you see. Not many people would think of making it up like that. But... Of course it works. I've got most of the fish from right down there. Yes, I don't think there's any need to buy another back west ground. Another 10 years at least. Wow, I feel exhausted even editing that film. I mean, ladies, that was some fishing session, was it not? That's probably, I think that's my best UK big fish type session on carp I've had. But the thing is, it's at the, one of the most epic places. It's not a hole in the ground, is it? It's a 12 acre typical English estate lake with I'm going to call them wild natural fishing, would I be right? Carpies will tell me. I'm calling that wild natural fish that bred there. So that made it even better. And of course, it's not just the fish that are in there. It's the grandeur of your surroundings. The peace, other than the planes. Oh, and the geese. All you carp anglers know what it's like. The guys up on Temple. Those geese, they must drive you mad, guys. How do you put up with them? Oh, want a little bit of that? 
but it is a nice place, it's natural, good English, old, old school, old style, fishing lake, and I fish it basic, and I only went down that end of the lake, basically because they had this match going, I thought, I don't want to get pestered by people rocking up at six and seven in the morning, oh mate, you're in the swim, we've got a match pegged here, I didn't want any of that, so I thought I'd get as far away from people as I can, which I tried to do normally anyway. Anyway, the other reason I wanted to mention this here is that I think now is the time to mention it. We've been doing this a while, I've certainly been fishing for the last 60 odd years doing journalism, photography for the magazines, books and all that. So the transition to go to videos, for me, was well, so easy because I've done stills cameras for ever, it seems. So it's really easy and I think that's portrayed and it comes across in the filming that I do is that I can pretty well look at some of the shots, not the greatest finish, quality, sound, all that bit. I don't bother with all that. Drones, we tried all that. No one's going to watch any more of the film. They want the content in there. And of course, at my age, I've certainly up here got quite a lot of content jammed in there and churning around. But what we just passed, right, appears to be something unusual. I'm I'm in my 70s. I'm an old age pensioner. We have now recently passed 91 million views. And I've put up over 1,100 films of a wide variety of species, including the early doors ones when I had them converted from VHS to digital. If you look at the old vintage playlist, there's stuff there, there's a 645 pound blue marlin, not one of those measured ones, hanging up, weighed, and sold for food and eaten. Um, what else have we got in there? I think it's a big black marlin in there. Sharks, well there's several 500 pound sharks. One of the best ones was a, a 500 pound hammerhead I had, Right, I'll get into story time if I'm not careful. Took the family out, Mike will remember it because Mike was filming at the age of eight and nine, right? With this big hammerhead in a family boat. Can you imagine it's a family rental boat about four miles out to sea? I think we were fishing outside, big pine key on a mark they call the can. Any of you guys down in Florida Keys will remember it, the can. But we used to go over there, anchor on the bottom, and catch giant nurse sharks. And then, boom, along came Harry the Hammerhead. I think it was Harry. Might be Harriet. So, what I want to do is to thank you guys for supporting me, and Mike as well, with his channel, TA Outdoors. I've done the best I can. I've tried to put something back into fishing. I'm the one that's hopefully putting in. And I'm enjoying doing it, because you guys appear to enjoy watching it. Sure, someone's going to sell past me in numbers, but you know what? The Totally Awesome Fishing Show was the first UK show that I know to pass 91 million views. I'm not over 70. There's got to be something wrong with surely. Anyway, guys, I'd like to give my thanks for all you. I know I've helped a few people out there who've had some tough times, and that's really why I do it, um, and it keeps me on the straight and narrow. But another little thing is, I'm hoping to alter and make, I'm going to call it a sub-channel. Yeah, sub-channel. No, it's not an underwater one, but I've really enjoyed what I've been filming, and that is the secret to it. I'm not going to be a slave to the algorithm that you must do this, you must do that, blah, blah, click, make this, click, make that. Sure, we know how YouTube works, we've been doing it long enough. But it's just not me. If you're not true to yourself, well, what's the point in doing it? I don't want to be something I'm not doing. I don't want to protect my age. What have I got to prove? You know, I just am what I am, and you, you get Graham, and then that's it. So, thanks for watching it all, but keep a watch out. I'm going to tag in some extra stuff. It'll be hopefully starting next Wednesday. That's the next film after this one. And hopefully something different, and I'm going to hopefully keep it going for as long as I can. Keep watching, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, The Life of Mike, and we'll keep you full of fishing stuff, and this random stuff as well. See you again.